Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Hyper Backup on your Synology to backup to a TrueNAS server using rsync. And if you're new here, hi, this is Sonoran Tech, where we cover a wide range of tech topics from hardware to home labs to coding and current events. If you like the content, hit the sub button and leave a comment to let me know what other topics you would like to see. So let's jump into this one. I actually decided to make this video because I forgot how to do this and I needed to back up my uh, Synology to a TrueNAS server and I thought, it was going to be super simple and then I realized that I struggled with this the last time I did it and I didn't take any notes or write anything down and I thought I had made a video on it and I didn't. So this time we're going to make a video and hopefully this helps you but I think it'll actually help me in the future. So this seems like straightforward enough that it shouldn't be difficult, but actually hyper backup can be a bit of a pain in this regards. If you look at your options for using hyper backup to backup from Synology to a true NAS, you run into a few problems. Uh, the first of which is rsync D is not available on true NAS anymore. Now you can install it using an application, which is basically like a community provided container. And there is an rsync D container available, which I do have, and I wasn't able to get working. So I gave up on that one pretty quickly. The other avenues I've explored are using some type of file share or mount. And so it's very easy to mount TrueNAS using NFS or SMB onto your Synology and that works great. But the problem is that when you go into hyper backup and we have it here in front of us, you're like, hey, it's super easy. I can mount a, a folder and then I will just create a new backup task to a local folder. The problem is when you do this, you can only pick the top level shared folders. So if I pick local shared folder, I'll just pick single version. And here I only see the top level list of folders. Now your mounted folder would appear under one of these. So let's say uh, I had under documents and I, I created, I mounted TrueNAS under a folder called TrueNAS. I actually couldn't back up using hyper backup to that folder. It's in, so that seems like that would uh, be the ticket, but it doesn't work. So I struggled with this one for a bit and managed to get it working using uh, rsync over SSH. So let me show you how I did that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the TrueNAS side. And let me, let me just show you something real quick. So what I have is I'm actually running TrueNAS on a Proxmox cluster. You can see I have a three node cluster and two of these nodes, Proxmox 3 and 1, are each running TrueNAS. Nodes 1 and 3 are actually just old PCs with a bunch of old drives in them. They're super slow and they can probably only handle about one VM, but I wanted the flexibility that Proxmox offers. So I just run one VM running TrueNAS and I pass the drives directly up to TrueNAS to get it working and that works really well. But here I will show you. So, so let's start by logging into my TrueNAS instance. We'll start the configuration on this side. So what we're going to do is the first task is to go into the system settings services and we're going to need, need to enable SSH. So we will turn this on. We will set it to start automatically. So the next step is going to be to create a data set where you're going to store your backups. So you can go into data sets. You can see I have a folder called data one under my simple pool data set, and that will work just fine. So if you haven't done this, go ahead and create a data set. And we'll actually come back to this in a minute. But the next step is to create a user which will perform the backup. So we'll go into credentials, local users, hit add, and I will create a user called backup user. You're gonna set the password. Now for the home direct directory, you want to choose the data set you just created. So for my home directory, I had data one. I'm gonna set that as the home directory for this new user. Make sure not to click uh, create home directory. And then for the shell, we're gonna to need to set a login shell and I will set it to bash. Next, I'm also gonna set the user and group to give permissions to the home directory. And we'll save this new user. Now we're gonna go back to the data set and confirm the permissions on that data set. So I'm gonna pick the data one data set on the permissions, let's see, owner is backup user, group is backup user, uh, the permissions look right. So if they aren't, if these were set to root or something else, you'll wanna change those to match. So that should be it. Let me just check again that SSH is running. All good. So that is all the configuration needed on the TrueNAS side. So now let's jump over to the Synology DSM. And what you're gonna do is come in here, you're gonna open Hyper Backup. We're gonna create a new backup task. We're gonna choose folders and packages. And we're gonna come down, we're gonna choose rsync. And you can actually, I tested both of these and they both work. You can choose multiple versions or single versions. Now just keep in mind, it says here, if you choose multiple versions, 
you know, obviously you get multiple versions out of it and you'll unrestore, be able to go back in the timeline and pick the version you want. That's super nice, but you can't just go into the file system and read the versions. Uh, the single version option, again, one backup copy, but it says here, you have the flexibility to view and access the backup data on every device. And that's really nice. Like you could go into your true NAS, go browse the file system and you'll be able to see the data. So you can choose whatever you want here. I am going to pick single version for this. And you're going to choose on this, you're going to choose an rsync compatible server, and we will pick the server IP, which is, you can actually see it up above in the browser tab. It's 192.168.3.25. We will turn on transfer encryption. And then you're going to enter the username and password of the account you just created. So it was backup user. We'll enter the password. Now for the backup module, you're gonna to want to enter the full path of the data set on the TrueNAS server. So I'll go back to TrueNAS and I'll show you. So we can go into here and we will just open up a shell. And remember it was called like data one under uh, pool one. So if you go to MNT, I'm sorry, this is a little pixelated. It is even on my screen as well. So you can see uh, MNT, we have pool. And then there's data one under it. And actually you can see the permissions on that as well. So what we would put in the backup module is slash MNT slash pool slash data one. So we'll go ahead and put that in here. Let me just confirm that pool name was correct. It was pool. I can confirm it over here, pool data one. Okay, we'll hit next. So now you pick the folders you wanna back up. I'll just pick the documents folder for this demo. Then you can pick up any, any applications you wanna back up. I'm gonna skip this and there we go. Now I edited it out, but I did hit a bit of an issue there with a configuration on the account on the TrueNAS side, which I missed before. And that is you need to go into the account and you need to make sure that SSH password login is enabled. All right, so now we have our backup task. You can name it whatever you want. This directory will be created on the TrueNAS server under the data set. So it will be, if I look at storage, if I look at data sets, you would have pool data one, and then under data one, you'll have the name of the directory. So NAS 1-1 is fine. And here you can configure the backup however you want. That's it. So we can go ahead and run this real quick. So while that backup is running, I just opened up a shell and this will be easier to read than the uh, console on the web there. So I SSH into the TrueNAS server and you can see I am in the dataset directory, MNT pool data one. And here you can see the directory we specified in the backup configuration. And the backup is writing to this right now. And there you go, the backup information. So we'll let this continue running and we'll leave it here. So that is how you use Hyper Backup to backup to TrueNAS using rsync. Hope this was helpful and I hope it helps me in the future and we'll see you next time.